All right, so imagine yourself, you're, you're traveling in your self-driving cars uh, in a bunch of years in the future, and you're slowly approaching an intersection. And a few hundred meters from the intersection, you expect that the car will start slowing down. But, in fact, it doesn't slow down. In fact, it starts to speed up. And you're wondering, what the hell's happening? Why, am I, why the car is not slowing down? And a few meters before you actually get into an accident, you take manual control and you stop the car. Now, how could this happen? Your car's artificial intelligence systems trained to a method known as deep learning have passed numerous, hundreds of thousands of intersections and have seen numerous stop signs before and suddenly your car has gone rogue and has tried to kill you. So your car might have become a victim of an adversarial attack. Adversarial attacks are a new form of security risk. They're the first, they're one of the first ways you can actually create a security exploit of a deep learning neural network. Deep learning is actually the, the most advanced form of AI we have today. It's responsible for the most interesting things you've seen that have come out of AI in recent years. And although deep learning is quite advanced, for today it can be quite naive. Our team at Centrida has developed an adversarial AI, an AI whose only job is to learn how to deceive and fool other artificial neural networks or other AI. So it can turn, it can turn a sports car into a toaster, or make Sylvester Stallone look like Keanu Reeves. Now, to give a more concrete example, here we have an image of a wolf, and uh, it's it's being classified by Microsoft Azure's image classifier, one of the you know developed by Microsoft, one of the kind of biggest deep learning classifiers out there. And you see here that it seems quite normal. So you have a close up of a wolf here, and we have a Wolf in the description, right? Suddenly, when we run this through Centrilus and Reserva AI, we get something entirely different. We get a cat, and the, the, the caption reads, a cat with its mouth open. <laughs> All right. And we actually run the same thing through three other image classifiers out there, this, and they return the same results. We have a cat in the image, and obviously, to us humans, it seems like any other close-up of a wolf. So, and, and keep in mind that these are, uh, so coming back to my example with, with the, with the self-driving car, the systems inside the self-driving car, the AI systems work similarly to how the image classifier works. So, so you know, if somebody else prints out manipulated stop signs and stamps them over public roads, you know, to us, they might look like any other stop sign, but to the AI systems, to the deep learning AI systems, in the self driving car, they might look like something entirely different. And keep in mind that these image classifiers have been de developed by companies that have quite a huge budget. They've been developed, uh, they've been trained over colossal amounts of data, hundreds and thousands of images, more than we can perceive. They've been, they've been engineered by teams of hundreds of software engineers and companies who have multi million dollar budgets on their disposal, uh, at their disposal, and they still manage to deceive it deceive the neural network. Similarly to how we can deceive a neural network, we can actually make it think that something doesn't, doesn't appear. So here we have an image of a baby elephant playing with a, with a pink ball. And this is Clarify, yet another quite well-known image classifier out there based on deep learning. And see here we get elephant in the results. So let's run this through Centrida's AI, adversarial AI and see what we get. Boom. The elephant's gone. And this, even though this has been trained on thousands and hundreds and thousands and millions of, image of uh, images of elephants, you know, to us humans, we can clearly see it, but the deep learning image classifier cannot, still cannot see it. And you're probably wondering, how does this all work? How does this magic work? You know, you've heard so many great things about AI and suddenly I'm showing this thing. So, in order for us to understand how it works, we need to take a step back and look at what an artificial neural network is. It's, it's mimicking a biological neural network. It's mimicking our brain. So, so when you look at this image of a baby elephant, what do you think? How do you think you recognize it? For you, you instantly recognize this image of a baby elephant. You, you know that this is an elephant, right? And 
you, you, you actually still, and this is similar to how the brain works, but you know, we still have data flowing from our sen sensory data flowing inside our brain, being processed by the brain by numerous regions, and suddenly, you know, to us it comes to our minds that this is an image of a baby elephant. But we don't know the exact mechanism how this works. Artificial neural networks do the, do the, do the same thing, but to them, the elephant first looks like this one, like this. Basically, the first layer of artificial neural network first analyzes the smallest details, things like corners, edges, and colors, and then it starts to look at the bigger picture. And you know, suddenly, it kind of looks at all the details in the picture and says, okay, this is 95.574% elephant. That's definitely not how we humans perceive the world. But uh, it, does, it, does all this, it, it does all this using hard statistics. Hard statistics. We humans, we use, we use you know we use things like you know intelligent, uh, intelligent deduction, uh, intuition, or as researchers call it, general knowledge. And for a deep learning neural network, it's just you know just statistics. So if we slightly change, if we slightly change uh, uh, the details of the image, you know the the smallest details of the image, we can actually make the neural the neural network fire a different set of neurons and eventually kind of deceive it that something else is being shown in the picture or something else doesn't, or something doesn't exist. And sometimes it takes as little as 10 pixels to change in a photo to make a neural network make the wrong decision. And you can use a similar method for neural networks to do natural language processing, applications such as automatic chatbots or sentiment analysis systems. Here, the technique is if you, if you actually change, if you actually make small typos, intentionally make small typos in the text of words that may actually have a different meaning if, if they are you know, put as typos, or if you make certain combinations of adverbs and nouns, you can make a, a text that to us humans is having you know, a positive sentiment, but to a deep learning neural network it might look like you know, somebody is saying something negative. <laughs> So there's something, something else that's a little kind of concerning, but still interesting about new, deep learning neural networks. So now, apparently we, know how, apparently we know how to deceive artificial neural networks, and we know how they work. But they're, they're so complex, some of them are made of thousands and up to millions of layers and parameters. And unlike computer software, where you can exactly pinpoint where a bug came from or where a security glitch came from or you know some kind of exploit came from in deep learning neural networks this is this is very difficult it's almost impossible to find out how it made the decision because the immense level of complexity of the deep learning neural network and there's one way you can, we can control this we can use uh, we can let us humans decide what data the deep learning neural network can be trained on a method known as supervised learning. Unsupervised, but uh, unsupervised learning, on the other hand, is much more powerful because, because you know, supervised learning leads to limited results, but unsupervised learning doesn't need a human being. And it's actually closer to how we humans perceive the world, and it lets the deep learning neural network kind of make a perception of the world by itself. But apparently, uh, they're kind of difficult to control. So we get, we get new slides like this one, or this one. And actually, this one is from yesterday, November 10, 2017. So, you know, it's, it's quite relevant, right? Now, looking at, this, looking at these examples of, uh, you know, of, of security risks and you know, deep learning neural networks going rampant, they seem a little bit far off in the future. But keep in mind that investment in artificial intelligence has been going through the roof in recent years because of the recent advancements in, in, in computing and in technology, in technology. So we need to, we need to mm -hmm. kind of you know, mentally prepare ourselves that I mean, AI right now is kind of eating the world. It, AI, we are on the onset of seeing AI kind of taking over the world just like software did a little bit over 20 years ago. And we must mentally prepare ourselves that AI will become an integral part of our lives in the next years. And you know, keep in mind that, you know, and, and this is, 
and this is to you know AI that um, and not talking about you know s some kind of like you know super intelligence uh, taking over the world or I'm not talking about uh, you know robots or anything or anything out of science fiction. I'm talking about the AI of today that will become part of our lives in the next years. And even today's AI is first it's it's hard to control. You can easily make an AI, you know, do something that isn't supposed to do, kind of lose control over it. And second, you, you can easily deceive an AI by just making the smallest change in, in, in the input data. You can make an AI, you know, be, be deceived and, you know, make the wrong decision. So, you know, and, and we, we, must, we, must, we must start thinking about AI security from, from this very day, from this very moment. Now, all this sounds a little scary. And that's why it's intuitive we've set ourselves to make AI secure and difficult to deceive. So what are the sound of ways of doing it? Well, first, we can make a guardian AI. Just we can we can make an adversarial AI which is which 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 is you know trained to deceive other artificial neural networks. We can make an AI that's actually something like a firewall, so so that it's trained to know when an adversarial attack is happening and you know it it automatically rejects that kind of data. Or, 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 or in, a, in another fashion, it can actually make our AI run through adversarial training routines, basically train hard on our AI so that it knows what kind of adversarial attack is. So basically it means occasionally exposing it to uh, some kind of malicious data and then labeling it as a as bad, as bad example. Or uh, for, for unsupervised learning, so for artificial neural networks, especially unsupervised learning, we can attach reporting services to several layers of the neural network so that we can kind of scan how the data is being processed, kind of similar to you know, doing an MRI scan on the brain. And this way, we'll be able to detect potential exploits or security holes uh, early on before they actually you know, make the AI make, you know, start making the wrong decisions. And these are the first. These are the first rules of the principles of making, uh, of of designing deep learning artificial intelligence systems. These kinds of these kinds of rules will set us up for a future where AI will be part of our daily lives, just like smartphones and computers are today. And whatever we come up in the next years, in the next five to ten years, we need to make sure that it's. That, it, that, that it's secure, that, that it's you know, hardened enough to withstand attacks from, from malicious parties. And you know, deep learning is, 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 is a great field. It's, it's really, in AI in general, it's great. And we shouldn't be discouraged by the fact that we're getting such type of security exploits. Deep learning has let computers learn from previous experience. It has freed them from the shackles, from the uh, of the procedural and logical part of the software that we have today. And deep learning has also made computers creative. They can create, they can now create their, their own art, you know, play their own musical instruments, and even write poetry. So it would be really sad if you know, a bunch of security exploits just make us kind of afraid of what's, what's coming. And we also, uh, and we're still in the early days of artificial intelligence, so uh, you know, security, security uh, kind of, you know, de deceiving neural networks or things like that uh, are, you know, just something to be expected. So, even though AI, uh, so even, I mean, but despite security shouldn't be uh, neglected, the benefits that AI will give us, give, will give to humanity far outweigh the potential dangers. So, let's be brave and embrace the future. Thank you.